Good morning, everyone. I'm excited but a little sad because today is the last day of our Lord's Prayer series. And we are going to spend today talking about and thinking about all the different parts of the Lord's Prayer that we learned over the past several weeks. To do this, we have a special time where we're going to get to watch as Miss Betsy prays the Lord's Prayer, and it doesn't quite go the way that she expects. We're going to get to see different clips of her praying the Lord's Prayer, and in between, there's going to be worship, questions, a fun object lesson from Mr. Scott towards the end that involves a lot of rice. So you're going to want to check the whole thing out today as we learn and relearn and continue to learn that God loves when we talk to him. So let's watch this all together. I'll come back at the end, see what you thought, but I'm really excited about it. So let's take a look together. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes. Kids, quiet down there. I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you. I'm praying. Our Father, who art in heaven. There, you did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father, who art in heaven. Here I am. What's on your mind? Oh, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just, you know, just saying my daily prayers, you know, my daily duty so that I can feel a little better. All right, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means... It means, oh, good grief. I don't know what it means. How should I know? It's just part of the prayer. By the way, what does it mean? It means honored, holy, and wonderful. Hey, that makes sense. I never thought about it like that. Huh. Do you really mean that? Sure, why not? What are you going to do about it? Doing? Nothing, I guess. I, you know, I just think it would be kind of nice if you got control of things down here on earth as you do up in heaven. Have I got control of you? 
Well, they go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about the way you belittle your peers? You've got a real problem there, you know. And then there's the way you spend your money, all on yourself. And what about the kind of books you read? Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as some of the rest of the people in church. Excuse me. I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it, it will have to start with the ones who you are praying for. Like you, for example. Oh, all right. You know, I do have some hang-ups. Well, now that I mention it, I caught, probably could name some others. So could I. You know, I haven't thought about it very much until now, but I really would like to cut out some of those things. I would like to, you know, be really free. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some victories can truly be won. I'm proud of you. Look, Lord, I need to finish up this prayer. This is taking a lot longer than I expected. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut out the bread. You're overweight as it is. Hey, wait a minute. What is this, criticize me day? Here I am doing my religious duty and all of a sudden you break in and remind me of all my hangups. Hi everybody, it's so good to see you again. God loves when we talk to him. We've talked about that before. You know, talking to God is really praying to him. And I've told you how I talk to God all day. I'm just chatting it up with him all day, but it may be hard for you to talk to God, to pray. Do you have a hard time talking to God? Why don't you go and talk about that with somebody that's with you and we'll get back together and I'll tell you what I think about that in a minute, okay? See you in a minute. I wish we could be together so I could hear you and, and what you came up with when you talked about this. But if you're having a hard time talking to God, remember, you have the Lord's Prayer. It's what Jesus gave us. So we always have something to say to God, to pray to God. Now, I find that if I start with the Lord's Prayer, I always have more to say. You can start with the Lord's Prayer and see where it leads you. How, how cool is that? So I'm so glad to be, to be with you. I miss you. Let's get back to Miss Betsy and the Lord's Prayer. See you soon. Praying is a dangerous thing. You could wind up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I'm scared to. Scared of what? Um, know what you're going to say. Try me and see. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What about Sheila? See, I knew it. I knew you would bring her up. Why, Lord, she's told nothing but lies about me. She's told stories about my family. Uh, she owes me money that I have not seen. And I've sworn to get even with her. But your prayer. What about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're admitting it. 
But it's not much fun carrying that load of bitterness around inside, is it? No, but <laughs> I'll feel better as soon as I get back at her. Oh, what plans I have for her. She'll wish she never moved into this neighborhood. You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you are already. But I can change that. You can? How? Forgive Sheila, then I'll forgive you. Then the hate and sin will be Sheila's problem, not yours. You will have settled your heart. Oh, you're right. Well, you always are. And more than I want revenge, I want to be right with you. All right. All right, I forgive her. Help her find the right path, Lord. She's bound to be awfully miserable now that I think about it. Anybody who goes around doing what she does has to be out of it. Some way, somehow, show her the right way. There now, wonderful. How do you feel? Hmm. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, I feel pretty good. You know, I don't think I'll have to go to bed tonight uptight anymore. Actually, I think I might even get some sleep. I might be well rested the following morning. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. All right. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good, good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. 
What do you mean by that? Don't turn on the TV when you know the laundry needs to be done and the house needs to be picked up. Also, about the time you spend coughing with your friends. If you can't influence the conversation to positive things, then perhaps you should rethink the value of those friendships. Another thing, your neighbors and friends shouldn't be your standard for keeping up. And please, don't use me as an escape hatch. I don't understand the last part. Sure you do. You've done it a lot of times. You get caught in a bad situation, you get in trouble, and then you come running to me. Lord, help me out of this mess, and I promise I'll never do it again. You will remember some of those bargains you tried to make with me. Yes, I'm ashamed, Lord. I really am. Which, uh, which bargain are you remembering? Well, there was one night, me and the kids were home alone, and the wind was really gusting at, I would say, 60 miles per hour. And the rain was beating down and we had a tornado warning and I got so scared that I cried out to you, God, please help us. And if you do, I promise I will do my devotions every day. Well, did you? I'm sorry, Lord. I really am. Up until now, I, I just thought that, you know, praying in the Lord's Prayer every day that I could do what I liked. I didn't expect anything to happen like this. Hey guys, I don't know if you ever played this game, chess. It's a super complicated game. In fact, there are people who have devoted their whole lives to studying this game. And uh, all the pieces move in different ways, but it's, it's really on this board that is uh, 64 squares. And there's a story about the guy who invented it. He invented it for a king, and the king was so pleased with this wonderful strategy game that he said, you know, name your price for this wonderful game. And the guy said, simple, just put one grain of rice on the first square and then double it for the next square and then double it for the next square and the next square and the next square and just keep doubling it all the way and that's all I want. Well, the king was so pleased to have such a small price. I mean, rice, rice is super cheap for such a wonderful game. So he ordered his treasurer to pay the man. And a couple weeks later, the guy came back and said, I still haven't been paid. And the king was upset with his treasurer and said, why haven't you paid him for this game? And the treasurer said, because we got about here and we don't have any more rice in the whole kingdom. And so the reality is, if you put one grain of rice here, look, <clears throat> just one simple grain of rice on the first square, and then you double it, and so you'd put two on the next square. And then four, there you go, four on the next square. But then look, it goes up to 16 on the next square and then pretty soon that 16 gets doubled and doubled and pretty soon by the end of it even before you hit the end of the first row you're looking at a lot of rice on this board and that's just a little bit to start you know in fact if you do the math and you calculate it all the way out to the end by the time you got to this square you would have a number called 18 quadrillion grains of rice. Now, quadrillion isn't a number that we talk about very often, but to give you an idea of what that's like, that's about double the number of grains of sand on every beach and every desert in the whole world. Nobody could ever, there's not that much rice that ever existed. And so, so you may be wondering why I'm telling you this. Well, we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer, and we've been saying how God loves it when we talk to Him. And, and Miss Betsy just said, you know, I thought I could pray the Lord's Prayer every day and then do whatever I liked. But the truth of the matter is, when we pray, it's kind of like this rice. It starts small, and then it starts growing, and the more we do it, 
the more it becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger part of our lives. You know, if we're faithful with prayer, it makes us like God and it brings us closer to God and we begin to change. But it all starts out with something small, just like this, just like saying the Lord's Prayer every day. So guys, I want you to remember, keep praying, keep talking to God. God loves it when you talk to him. And if you do that, it may seem very, very small at first, but it's gonna grow and it's gonna grow and it's gonna keep going and soon it'll change everything about you. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Remember, God loves it when we talk to him. Go ahead and finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would make me really happy? No, but I'd like to hear it. I want more to please you than anything else. I can see what I've made a mess of my life and I can see how great it would be to do your will and to be your follower. You just answered the question. Yeah, I did? Yes, the thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you who truly love me. And I see that happening between us. Now that some of these old sins are out and exposed and out of the way, well, there's no telling what we can do together. Well, let's see what we can make of it. Of me, okay? Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever and always. Amen. God, we thank you that you are our Father in heaven, that your name is holy, that you are so amazing and incredible. We thank you that your will is what happens on earth. We pray that we would want to do what you want us to do, that we would seek after you. We pray that every day you would give us what we needed, that you would take care of us through the ups and the downs. We pray that you'd help us to remember that we are forgiven by you and therefore we forgive others. We thank you that you help us to make good choices in everything that we do and that even when we make bad choices, we're forgiven by you. We give you all the glory and the power and the honor forever and ever and always. Amen. Well, thanks guys for today and going through the Lord's Prayer. It was so awesome. And I can't wait for you guys to see the new series we're starting next week. And I'll give you a little hint. It's all about the life of Jesus. I'm so excited, guys. I hope you'll hang out with us on the Zoom call right now. We're going to be hanging out, asking questions. Maybe we'll play a game. There's always fun and laughter. And I hope we'll see you then. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>